Hey friends, before we get into the video, I just wanted to let you know I joined the HyperX Partner Program. So what does that mean and who is HyperX? Well, HyperX makes some amazing gaming peripherals from mice, keyboards, headsets, and even RAM. My computer actually has HyperX RAM and it's been running great for over two years. I also have one of their wireless mice and I've been using it with a wireless mouse pad and it is such a cool setup. But yeah, if you guys want to check out their products, if you go to any of my recent videos, I'm going to have links for both the HyperX products and affiliate links from Amazon. So if you'd like to support the channel, go ahead and check those out. I've recommended some cool stuff that I actually use or would use. Um, so yeah, if you get anything cool, let me know. And thanks for supporting the channel. Let's get into the video. Hey friends, welcome back to Crease Pattern Class 6 Part 3. So this might be a little bit of a shorter part because we're just going over this one section. Um, but once again, we are working on harder structures, increase patterns, and just how to approach them. Um, and this is the leg from Damien Maliki's Sun Beetle. And so what makes this tricky is there is color change, you can see right here. Um, and it's, it, it makes the collapse a little bit weird, and I'll kind of show why. Um, but for starters, I'll open this one up just a little bit. You can see that there's kind of a lot going on to force it to collapse closed. Um, so we're going to kind of go over that and uh, kind of see how to approach this. Um, but yeah, get your crease pattern printed out. This is going to be posted in the link below. And also, uh, make sure you got your grid and pre-crease all good. So something that'll look like this. And with that, we're going to get on going. Um, if you want to try just this section without the video, by all means, go for it. It would be a good exercise. But if you want to just, just kind of follow along, you can as well. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. All right, so one of the first things that makes this a little bit tricky is these uh, pleats right here. And these are left over from the level shifters. And so if we take a look at the part from the last class where we actually did the level shifters, there is normally consequence folds, as you can see right here. And these pleats, we can use this one and show that um, these would be about the same um, if you were folding the whole model together. So it'd be something where these would be attached, I guess on this side. Um, and those pleats continue onwards. And sometimes, like in my designs, normally I just let them go all the way to the edge. Um, but in this case, Damien, he used them to help uh, with the color change, or not really help with the color change, but he found a way to collapse it in where he could get color change and use the full um, length of the paper, and not just keep those pleats pleated. Um, and I think that's a really nice touch to this design. Um, but yeah, let's see how to collapse this, because it makes it a little bit tricky. Um, so grab your paper, and the first thing you're going to want to do is fold the pleats. So similar to last time, we had these pleats all running through. Uh, so we're just going to block those in and it's gonna be something like this. We have one here and then we have another one right here. And then we got one more, and I believe it's two units up. That's right, right here. And once we have this done, um, I just want to make a quick note that we have this half unit right here. It's a partial, partial grid unit, um, but it's in a half. And honestly, since it's on the edge, you can fold it in last, it would mean you have to undo some of these pleats. Um, so it kind of just depends on preference. But for now, I'm actually just going to fold it in so we don't have to unfold too, too much later on. Um, but the other thing to note with this partial unit is this stuff right here. Um, these are, again, they're just hinges in it. Uh, it. It kind of just makes like a reverse fold. Um, so you don't have to worry about that too much. Um, we're going to do all that later. It's it's still just an Elias stretch. Um, this isn't the hard part, even though it might look weird. All right, but yeah, get your pleats in like this. And next we have a lot of actually 
pleats over here that we don't quite need. So we can fold these in too. And that's just gonna help us lock in some of the collapse. And what this simulates is that we've already done the middle section and you notice we have all these pleats collapsed in. So that's kind of what you can imagine what these are um, if we we're doing the full thing. All right, so normally we could just fold in the Elias stretches, but something I want you guys to notice is we can actually take the similar shape of this and then see these folds here and then there. And you might see that, okay, these are all mountain. And that's similar to what we did up here, where all these were mountain. And they're basically one unit Elias stretches through the whole um, sheet. So we let's actually kind of collapse that. And what these are gonna kind of look like are reverse folds. We're not actually going to do the rest of the pleats, but it'll just show kind of the shape, the, the general base shape um, that we can look at. So even without doing the full lie stretch, if I open this up and I fold all of that mountain, and then we have these guys right here, I'll orientate the same way. If we go like this for all of them. Just like that. Right? So we can kind of see this shape that we're making here. And this is very important to the full collapse. Um, other things to note is, as you can see, it wants to fold, valley fold along this middle section is right here but we actually don't have um there's, there's no there's no valley fold here so what you can assume is that in order for the whole thing to collapse these side portions are necessary to tuck in to the sides so that this pleat can remain intact and that is exactly how this collapse works so i'm going to show this one again and you can notice that middle set of pleats is right here and you can notice that the shape, it has to tuck inside just like this to collapse. And that makes um, collapsing it very difficult if you were to start from the edge first, because you would have to do these one at a time and push them in and hold them in place while you do the rest. And it's all gonna get messy um, until you finally get everything in together. But we wanna try to avoid that, make it as seamless as possible. Um, so if you can start with this, then it'll make it a little bit easier to understand as you go for it. There'll still be a little bit of fidgeting you have to do, um, but it'll make it a little bit easier. So from here, we can now start the Eli stretch. Um, because this section is a little bit different, I recommend starting here, and then it'll go to the middle, and then you can do the last one up here. So let's get started on that. So we're going to work on the Eli stretch here, and there's not like, a sequenced way to do it. This is box plate and y'all should know, already know how to do Elias stretches for the most part. Um, and I just realized one of these pre creases are wrong. Um, so sorry if that confused you up till this point, but the pre crease should be there, not, not there. So we are going to be working still on the same section. It's, it's, it's the same, uh, but look at your crease pattern. We're going to do this unit and yeah, it's a, it's a little bit different. Um, especially here where it has these three mountain folds. It's kind of the same as the others. We have this unit right here and right here. Um, so we're gonna start it off like that. And, and then, yeah, and then the rest of it, it just follows a regular Elias stretch. Um, so don't take this too hard. Um, just try to go through it. Uh, again, there's not really a full like sequence. This is. It just, it's, as you can see, it's, it's just an Elias stretch as, as you really go on. Um, but the important thing is to rem make sure that this stays tucked in. Um, and what kind of helps with that is if you continue these pleats on the right side and continue to go in, it'll help lock this in place. So hold that. Again, it's a little bit fidgety, which makes this a little bit more difficult than other um, Elias stretches we've seen. And then you can start to fold in those Elias stretches more and more, um, just like this. And as you can see, I'm 
just not folding it all the way. I'm just getting the creases in the right direction. Uh, mainly just the grid in the right direction. And then from here, I can pinch here to keep this in place as I collapse. And that lets the rest of it kind of uh, collapse together. Now, we're you have a couple options. You can fold these pleats all the way through the model, or you can do the other side and kind of let it do um, it together. I kind of like to do the latter, um, but just to show, I'm getting up to this point, and then I'm going to do this side. Now, as you can see, we have another line stretch here. Not going to do this one yet. I'm just going to worry about this one right here. Now, on the actual sun beetle, this Elias stretch is replaced by a Pythagorean stretch. Um, it, I already have a video on that, so instead of doing a Elias stretch, you would do the Pythagorean stretch first as you get to this unit. So just a heads up uh, for when you approach the Sun Beetle. So just like that. And as you can see, we've reached the same grid unit as before. Um, we just have a little bit more to go in this Elias stretch. So right here. And this part pulls in. And don't forget, we want to keep these things tucked. So let me just fix this right here. I'm holding this together. And that helps bring that together like that. And it just folds closed, just like that. So yeah, again, it's it's a lot of fidgeting with the paper, um, but if you approach it in this way where you can keep those flaps folded together, it'll be a lot less messy than trying to do them one at a time. Um, and maybe the first time you try this, you kind of run into that issue, um, and you'll see you'll see what I mean. Um, but the thing to note uh, with this, where the collapse part is a little bit harder, is just to pay attention to see, okay, are there any spots where potentially these units really have to be together first in order for the whole thing to collapse. You want to avoid mushing if possible, you know. Technically you can mush it since it's in the middle and it's not seen. Um, but you, <laughs> you really don't want to. Um, since this is a leg, it's important that it remains thin. And precision helps it remain thin and it's a lot more satisfying to not mush. Um, so now we can just cl uh, collapse the rest of this Elias stretch over here and this is just really simple line stretching nothing special there and we have our leg complete that just besides the half unit that goes right here it's a little reverse fold and boom that is our leg unit try this out just it's it's more of like a challenge than i guess a, a lesson um, but really see how this kind of works and then you can observe all these pleats. There's a lot of weird things you can do with these pleats. Um, this is one of them. And this is one of the nicer, more efficient things you can do with them. Um, so hopefully that helped y'all a little bit. And the reason why we did these two structures is now I am confident that if you've made it this far into class, you can actually fold Damien's full sun beetle. We've done the top portion with the color change, we've done the side leg with the hardest color change, or the hard, I, I guess it's not really hard, but this is, I think this is the hardest part of the beetle. Um, all that remains is really the Pythagorean stretch, which really isn't that hard. And then we've done the pleats already. The pleats were shown in a previous class. Um, that should let you fold the entire base. Um, shaping it is just a little bit more difficult, but I think it should be up to you guys to try to figure that out and put your own shaping and creativity to the use to kind of see how to get all the details, mainly the eyes. Uh, so yeah, congrats for making it through class six. If you guys want, the exercise for class six is basically to fold um, Damien's sun beetle. So that crease pattern, the post to crease pattern is also going to be posted in the description. So go check that out. It's a lot of fun. I think it's a great model. Um, you guys have seen it before. It's in the thumbnail. Um, but yeah, thank you so, so much for watching and really hats off to y'all for making it this far. 
um, you're pretty close to being able to, or if not, you're ready, you're fully ready to start taking on a lot harder crease patterns. Um, so yeah, wish you guys the best and see you in the next video. All this origami, all this origami, all this origami got me going kamikaze now. I'm